Here are five quick ways you can transform basic chord progressions into something that sounds beautiful on the piano. So first of all, here's the basic chord progression. So it starts off with one bar on the C major, then the E minor, then the F major, then it jumps up to the A minor for two, and the G major for two, and then finishing off on the F major. So there's the chord progression, and it sounds nice, but it's just using basic triad chords. So here's the first way to make it sound more beautiful. So here what you do is you take your chords and you move them all up to the right by one octave. And then, instead of playing them in their root position, you're going to play them all as second inversions. So just to explain super quick, you've got the root position, which is the normal triad chord. And then you've got the first inversion, which is where the root goes up an octave. The other two notes are the same. That's the first inversion of C major. And then you've got the second inversion. So you take the bottom, which is now the E, and that goes up to the right by one octave. The other two notes are the same. So that is the C major second inversion. But with this, the easiest way to play all these chords as a second inversion is to remember this shape here. And to find it, you've got your root here, take the top and put it down one octave, and that gives you the second inversion. And you do that with all of the chords, like this. So as you can hear, the sound is much more delicate with the higher range, and because of the second inversion, you've got that sort of like nice harmony on the top there. It sounds just a bit different to the normal triad chords. So that's the first one. Now on to the next. The next thing you can do is apply a broken chord pattern. And this just adds a nice flowing quality to the sound. So this pattern works really well when used with those second inversions that we just looked at a moment ago. So what you're going to do is use the same shapes, but apply this pattern in the right hand. You're going to play the top of the chord, the bottom, and then the middle. And that would be one beat. And you would repeat it for four beats if you're playing the chord for a full bar, like this. One, two, three, four. And then you just apply that to the rest of the chord progression, like this. If you're enjoying these so far, then don't forget to hit that like button, as well as subscribing and clicking that little bell button, so you don't miss out on any of my videos, which are usually released once a week. Another thing you can do to make chord progression sound more beautiful is use suspended chords. And what suspended chords do is they add a tension into the chord, and then when that chord is resolved, it can add a certain beauty to the sound. So first of all, a suspended chord is when you're playing another note in the chord which isn't normally there. And the most common ones are the sus4, which that would be the normal triad, and you play the one, two, three, four there. That's a sus4. So you're playing the fourth note of the chord rather than the third. And then you can resolve it, listen. Yeah? And then the other one you can use, which works well as well, works well as well, is the sus2, like this. So one, two, and then again you can resolve it. So you can do that on any of the chords in that progression. Nice, isn't it? And you can hear the tension there, and then it's released, which sounds lovely, doesn't it? The 
This next one is using a broken collar pattern again, but in both hands, and they kind of mirror each other. So it's quite easy to do because your fingers are pressing down at the same time. I'll show you what I mean. So what you're going to do is play the chords in both hands in root position. So normal triad chords here. But you're going to play this pattern in the right hand, you're going to play your 5, 3, 1, so playing the top, middle, bottom, and that just repeats. And in your left hand, you're going to play bottom, middle, top, bottom, middle, top. But the reason why I've called it the broken chord mirror pattern, because look, 5, 3, 1 fingers in your left, 5, 3, 1 in your right, and they played at the same time, like this. Yeah? And they're kind of coming inwards together. And then when you add the sustained pedal, can you hear that? Sounds nice. And move up to the E minor. And that sounds really beautiful, doesn't it? And because you're using that mirror pattern, it creates these little harmonies. And talking about harmonies, we're going to move on to the last one now. And this one sounds really cool. It's a little tiny bit harder, but hopefully you'll enjoy learning it. Okay, so for this last one, we're using an arpeggiated pattern in both hands, and they're also in harmony as well. Okay, so for this one, in the left hand, what you're going to do is you're going to play the triad chord, but with an octave on top there. So the root's going to go up an octave. So for each of those chords, basically playing the full chord there, but you're going to break it up, playing from the bottom to the top. But in your right hand, you're not just going to play the same arpeggio. What you're going to do is you're going to invert it once, okay? So rather than playing that arpeggiated, you're going to take the root and put it up an octave there. Okay, so that is now the chord you're going to do. And that's going to arpeggiate, right? And then when you play them at the same time, it creates this lovely harmony all the way through the chord progression. I'll just show you the C. Can you hear that? It sounds really beautiful, doesn't it? So just quickly, if you're not that familiar with like chords and inversion and stuff, I'll just quickly show you the right hand chords so you can copy them and learn them in your own time, and then put it together on the C. The E minor. The F major, then up to the A minor, the G major, and then back to the F major, and then you put that together, like this. sounds beautiful, doesn't it? And like I said, that one's a little bit harder than the other ones. So if you want to give it a go but it feels a bit tricky, just make sure you start off nice and slow when you first try it. Before you go, I've got a quick question for you. Which one of those do you think beautified the chord progression the most? I'd be really interested to hear what you think, so please do let me know in the comments below. And if you want to learn piano using a step-by-step -step method, rather than being on YouTube jumping around to one different video to the next, then I do have a range of online piano courses over on my website. I've got in-depth courses on blues, jazz, ear training, sight reading, as well as my ultimate piano chords course. I'll leave links for those in the description below. You may also want to check out my video on five beautiful piano runs and fills, which you can watch here. Anyway, if you've made it to the end of this video, high five! <laughs> I've been Arthur from Birds Piano Academy, and thanks for watching.